One of the oldest skills humans developed is farming. Once we figured out how to master the growth of crops and domestication of animals, we unlocked a whole new potential for society. And still to this day, farming is one of the toughest and most complex jobs out there. You need real knowledge to be a farmer. It's more than just sheep and pigs. In fact, humans have farmed some pretty unusual animals. From the cousin of the camel to the cow that thinks it's a zebra, here's the 20 rarest animals used in farming. <sighs> Number 20. Llamas. The llama is related to the camel, but it lives in South America and doesn't have a hump, just in case you were wondering. Llamas have been used as pack animals by native peoples for hundreds of years. They can carry as much as 50 to 75 pounds. With that much weight on their backs, they can travel up to 20 miles in a single day. Even on the rough terrain of the Andes, large amounts of goods can be moved with the help of a pack train of llamas. These trains can have as many as several hundred animals. Llamas will help carry things, but only up to a certain point. If a llama's too overladen, it won't move at all. These animals often lie down on the ground and may spit, hiss, or even kick at their owners until the load is taken off. I think we've all had a day at work where we felt like we were going into llama mode. On farms, livestock is often kept safe with the health of llamas. Llamas are always on the lookout, and even though they look cute and cuddly, they're not afraid to chase away a stranger. They also make great leaders and can lead a group of animals away from danger to a safer place. Their hides are used to make leather, and their wool is used to make ropes, rugs, and other things. Llama poop is dried out and used as fuel. And even after they die, llamas can still help their owners because some people eat them for their meat. The llama deserves to be celebrated, especially based on all of the various things it's helped us with. Just don't spit at me, dude. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Time for the rare topic. Now here's for a crazy idea. A farm full of bears? Normally having massive predators loose on your farm is the worst thing that could happen, but some people have recently started speculating that during the Middle Ages, Russians trained bears to help keep farms safe. They also helped out on the farm in all kinds of ways. You aren't going to want to mess with a farm that has a guard bear, are you? And it even helped out in feeding other animals and herding the sheep. Do you think that the bear could have been domesticated like that? Would you like to see more bears on farms? As always, comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know your opinion in the relation to what we just showed on screen. Let's go on to the next one. Number 19. Belted Galloway. Wait, is that a seriously overweight zebra? No, it's a heritage breed of cattle called a belted galloway. It has long hair and a strange white belt that goes around its body. They're raised for their marbled beef, but they sometimes are also milked. And sometimes they're just bought because they look cool. Many people want to know where they came from based on their look. Breeders call them belties because they have black, red, or dun colors on the outside and white in the middle. Even though there's references to sheeted cattle in writing and art as early as the 11th century, the first written history of the belted Galloway shows that they first appeared in the 16th century in the Galloway district of Scotland. During the Scoto-Saxon period, the Galloway breed of cattle became important, and the people who raised them were able to make money by selling cheese and hides. Later, a lot of the cattle were sold to English farmers, who fed them English grass for a while and then sent them to Smithfield Market. A full-grown belted Galloway bull can weigh between 815 and 955 kilograms, though some are smaller and others are bigger. A cow weighs between 400 and 600 kilograms, a heifer calf weighs about 30 kilograms on average, and a bull calf can be 35 kilograms or more. Number 18. Herdwick Sheep Mr. Sheep, it looks like you need a serious hair brushing. The Herdwick is not known for the quality of its wool or how many lambs it can have, but it's still a valuable farm animal with wacky hair. Herdwicks are very healthy and can live off of what they find in the wild. They also know to stay in their own area and don't wander off anywhere else. And Hardwicks are, in fact, one of the toughest breeds of sheep. They live on the slopes and pastures of England's highest mountains and can handle all kinds of weather. Herdwick lambs are born with black wool, as you can see in these images. Then when they grow up, they turn gray, like some people. 
Their wool is rough and warm, so it's often used to keep homes insulated. Beatrix Potter, the famous children's book author, helped keep the breed from going extinct after they were no longer being bred. They have good memories and a good sense of direction, so farmers don't have to keep them in a pen and they can graze safely on open fells. They also know how to get back home. The Herdwick sheep came from the northern pintail group of sheep, which may have been brought to Britain around 5,500 years ago. Their ancestors lived about 10,000 years ago, when sheep from Southwest Asia moved to Europe. This was when it was thought that sheep were first domesticated. Number 17. Rheas the greater rhea is about 4 feet tall and is the largest bird in South America. It can't fly though. Even though the big wings don't help them fly, they do help them stay balanced and change direction when they run. People often eat rhea meat and eggs. Sounds like they'd make a pretty filling breakfast as those are hefty eggs. Their skins are used to make leather, and hunting has led to a big drop in their numbers because of this trade. There's now rules that make it harder to hunt rhea and to try and save the birds from extinction. Greater rheas eat whatever they can find. They eat plants, fruits, seeds, insects, lizards, birds, and other small animals. Rheas like to eat crops grown by humans, which makes many South American farmers kinda angry at this bird. And this problem only gets worse as more grass lands are turned into farms and they're forced to eat crops. Greater rails are polygamous, which means that the males have more than one partner. The male makes a ground nest for the female, where she lays an egg every other day for a week to 10 days. Many females lay their eggs in the same nest, which can hold 50 or more eggs. The male rhea takes care of all its mate's eggs for the six weeks until they hatch. So basically, they're awesome dads. During this time, they're very protective of their young, and they will attack any animal, even a female rhea, if it gets too close. Number 16. Arucana chickens. Blue eggs are becoming super popular, and it's all thanks to a breed of chickens called the Arucana. Occasionally, people can mix up this strange breed with the Americana and the Easter Eger breed. It's easy to see why, though, since all these three chickens lay eggs that are different colors, and mostly blue. But the other two descended from the first one, so that's where the blue egg thing all started. The Arucana is hard to find in the US, and so it's considered a rare breed. Also, because of inherited genetic problems, a lot of hatcheries have decided not to breed them. In the 1930s, it went from Chile to the USA, where American chicken lovers started to fall in love with it. The APA didn't recognize them until the 70s, and only in the last 5 to 10 years have backyard chicken owners become interested in them. People who like a wide range of colors in their eggs have probably already added the Arucana to their flock because these eggs look amazing. The Arucana is unique not only because of the color of her eggs, but also because she looks different from other popular breeds. For one thing, she stands straight and looks like some type of wild game birds. Her well-known posture comes from the way her back slopes towards her bottom half. It's a pretty funny chicken all the way around. Number 15. Guinea Fowl These colorful birds come from Africa, but you can find them on farms all over the world. 16 years after Christopher Columbus came to America, guinea fowls were imported there and have been popular ever since. Even back then, they were common farm animals until chickens and turkeys came along. But you can still find them on small farms. They eat a lot of bugs, so they help keep ticks, slugs, and other pests away from livestock. There's many different species of these birds, and each has its own unique traits and characteristics. For instance, vulturine guinea fowls look like chickens with vulture heads and bright colors. Their heads look a lot like vultures because they're completely bald. Compared to the other guinea fowl species, they're kind of fabulous, it must be said. On their chest, they have bright blue feathers and long yellowish feathers, which is a pretty spectacular show. Number 14. Yak. On the Tibetan Plateau, the yak is an important symbol, the backbone of Tibetan culture and a hardy pack animal. It's hard to say enough about how important the yak is. This cousin of the cow lives at a high altitude and has handlebar-shaped horns and long hair. It grazes on the grasslands of the Tibetan Plateau. Yaks are used to the thin air, rough terrain, and harsh weather of Tibet, where winter temperatures drop below zero. They've lived there for thousands of years on a diet of grasses and sedges, which is not much by way of nutrition. Even though the yak is strong, it can't beat everything. About a million wild yaks used to roam the Tibetan Plateau just 50 years ago. 
The International Union for Conservation of Nature says that there are less than 10,000 wild yaks in the world today. Pocha, or Tibetan butter tea, is not for the faint of heart, but nothing about a nomad's life on the roof of the world is. A special black tea from Pemigol is mixed with yak butter, milk, and salt to make a traditional soupy drink that protects against the thin cold air of the Himalayan mountains. People say that some Tibetans drink the high calorie tea all day long, but this is mostly true of nomads who live on the high plateaus above 17,000 feet. It's probably not something that you'll ever find at Starbucks, but I would love to give it a try. Number 13. Naked Neck Chickens the turkin, also sometimes called the Transylvanian naked neck chicken, is a bird that looks like something out of your worst nightmares. Yes, this bird comes all the way from Transylvania, Romania, where the vampire Count Dracula is said to have lived. Maybe he would keep a few thousand of these strange birds in his yard. He could have fed them scrambled eggs and fresh blood in the morning. People called it a turkin because it looks like a turkey and they thought it was a turkey chicken mix. That naked neck hanging down sure looks like a turkey's neck, but this bird's actually all chicken. They aren't very common in the USA, but in Europe and South America, they have become common. You might think that this strange looking bird would be good for a chicken show, but they aren't very popular at chicken shows. They're still farm birds and can be used for both eggs and meat. Because it doesn't have feathers, it can handle hot weather better and is easier to pluck. If you decide to buy one, keep some silver bullets it's close by. And if it doesn't like the way your crucifix looks, you should send it back to Transylvania right away before things start to get really out of hand. Number 12. Myotonic Goats. Fainting Goat. Most people would say that the Tennessee Fainting Goat, which is also called the Myotonic Goat, looks like any other goat. Only, it has a strange genetic trait that makes it stiffen up, fall over, and pass out when it gets scared. The goat doesn't get hurt, but everyone else will find it pretty hilarious. In the 1880s, these goats first showed up in Tennessee. They called them wooden leg goats because when they fell over, their legs looked like they were made of wood, like a cartoon character whose head had just been hit with a big mallet or something. The goat's condition is caused by a problem with the chloride channel in their muscle tissue. The first one was seen in 1904, and a big study in the 30s helped us learn more about this strange goat. They used to be raised as meat goats, but now they aren't used as much and are known to be a breed that's in danger of extinction, which I guess isn't too surprising. Other than that, they're thought to be pretty healthy and strong goats just don't jump up and yell boo all at the same time unless you want to see one pass out. Number 11. Zebu Cattle if you're a farmer in a hot, humid area, you might not have regular cows on your farm, but you could definitely keep zebu cattle. Zebus are used as multi-purpose animals for farmers. They can give meat and milk, but they can also father calves from cows of different breeds. The strong animals with a hump also live a very long time. The zebu is an Asian breed of cow that's been raised since 3000 BC. There's about 75 breeds of zebu in the world today, and about half of them live in Asia, and the other half in Africa. They're easy to spot because they have a big hump on their shoulders and long skin flap on the chest called a dolap. Many zebus also have ears that hang down. The zebu is one of the world's smallest types of cows. Most of the time, they're gray or red, have horns, and loose skin. The zebu have been raised to be productive in places that are hot and humid. Because of this, they're smaller than regular domesticated cattle, and their metabolism is slower, and their sweat glands work better. Compared to other breeds, this breed of cattle is much better able to handle harsh conditions. Even though they don't like it when it's cold, they're tough when it's really hot and humid. It's a cow to take with you to the sauna. Number 10. Mangalitsa. From a distance, they might look like sheep, but if you look closer, you'll see they have snouts. Mangalitsas, which are also called sheep pigs, are from Austria and Hungary. They're worth about $1,600 each, which is five times as much as a regular pig. Their wool and meat are also popular. This pig almost went extinct, but it made a comeback. In the late 1950s, everyone loved mangalista pigs because they're so delicious. But all of a sudden, governments got worried about how much fat was in food, and people got scared and stopped eating their favorite piggies. They almost went extinct because of a lack of demand. The fact that mangalista pigs are practically made of lard, which is pretty much fat, is what made them taste especially good. 
They're about 60 to 70% lard, which is why they taste good when cooked right. But this almost put them out of business, so to speak, because most people started avoiding it like the plague, even though lard has less saturated fat and more unsaturated fat than butter. But in the early 1990s, a group of Hungarian animal geneticists realized their country had lost them almost entirely. There's now a campaign called Eat Them to Save Them. Every year, they raise and slaughter more than 50,000 Mangalista pigs. But I don't know, something feels a little bit off about talking about saving them when you kill over 50,000 of them every year. Number 9. Jerzertsko Solkava Sheep the Jersko Sokava is a type of domesticated sheep from the eastern Alpine region of Europe. Before the First World War, there were more of these sheep in southern Carinthia, Fruili, and Slovenia than any other breed. It gets its name from the areas that it used to be in the Austrian Empire, but are now Slovenia. For hundreds of years, the mountain sheep that were raised in the Alpine area of southern Carinthia were part of the Zalpelschaf type. They were tough, and they did well on the steep slopes and sparse grasses of the mountains. However, they didn't make much meat, and their wool was of poor quality. When wool production became the most important thing to humans about the sheep in the 18th century, rams of the now extinct Podovana breed, which was known for its high quality wood, were brought in from the Italian peninsula and bred with local ewes. At the beginning of the 20th century, there was less demand for wool. People tried to improve the meat yield of the Jersko Slovana by breeding it with the Bergamasca, a heavy meat breed from northern Italy with a large frame. This made the wool less good, which was not what was wanted. After the Second World War, the number of people in Austria kept going down. In the 1980s, only about 200 people still lived here. But by the end of 2013, there were 17,200 people living in Slovenia, which is a great change for this versatile, woolly guy. Number 8. Halflinger Horse The Halflinger came from the Tyrolean Mountains, which are now in Austria and Italy. In the Middle Ages, people rode horses and drove animal packs up narrow paths to get to these mountains. The job was hard and it needed quick, sure-footed, strong mountain horses. A colt named Foley was born in 1874. Foley was reared from one of these mountain mares and a half-Arabian stallion. Foley became the stallion that all purebred halflingers were born from. The breed was named after a village in Austria that was called Halfling at the time. In 1958, halflingers were brought to the US where they quickly became a favorite with both riders and and drivers. During World War II, the Halflinger was bred to be shorter and stocky. Since then, the focus of breeding has changed to making horses that can be both ridden and driven, which is more in line with how modern breeds look. The Halflinger can do a lot of things well because it's so versatile. It's a popular horse for jumping, dressage, and western show. It's strong enough to be used as a vaulting or packing mount. And it's also great driving for fun, riding on long distances, and riding on trails. Its calm nature and love of people also make it a great horse for therapeutic riding programs. Number 7. Austrian Bantam Chicken the Silky is a Bantam that's known for being small. It weighs 1.5 and 3.5 pounds, which is pretty tiny. It gets its name from the unique fluffy tuft that grows at the top of its head and feels more like silk than feathers. People call these chickens the poodles of the chicken world because of how strange they look. Back in the 1200s, they were only found in Southeast Asia. When the famous explorer Marco Polo went to the area, he saw a small black chicken with feathers that looked like fur. This could have only been the Silky. The Silky eventually made its way to North America. The soft little chickens are kept as pets, and their fur feels just like angora wool. Someone smart might make the first silky fur sweater one day. Number 6. Raka Sheep The Raka breed is a subtype of sheep known as the Zaka. It comes from the nation of Hungary. Both the rams and the ewes of these sheep have big spiral-shaped horns, which I think is pretty cool. As is the case with most sheep, they were raised for milk, meat, and wool. But a full-grown male can have horns that are more than two feet long. The spiral sticks straight up, and you probably wouldn't want one to charge at you. They look like they'd hurt more than a little if Mr. Sheep decided you were too close for his liking. There's two different ways that the sheep can be colored. Most of the time, they're brown with white spots, but sometimes they're just all black. Out in the sun, that black will turn a reddish color, and as the sheep ages, it eventually turns gray. Even though they have huge horns, these sheep are known for being pretty calm. In fact, they're a good choice for a pet sheep. Number 5. Gypsy Horse the Gypsy Vanner is a type of horse that comes from Ireland. It's been raised for more than 100 years to pull Gypsy caravans, and in 1996, it was brought to the US for the first time. 
This horse has been bred to be strong and have a lot of stamina, and the smaller ones are more highly regarded because they eat less and cost less to keep than the bigger ones. They're known for both how athletic they are and how friendly and calm they are. Around the middle of the 19th century, traveling gypsies in the British Isles began to use horses to pull their caravans. During World War II, the breed was improved and perfected even more. The horse was not only important to the family's survival because it moved their home caravan from one place to another, but it was also treated like a member of the family. The horse was in good shape because it got a lot of exercise and ate a variety of greens from hedge browse and bushes. So it seemed like everyone had a pretty good time when this horse is involved. Number 4. Baroque Donkey one of the most interesting farm animals in the world is the Austrian-Hungarian White Baroque Donkey, which is pretty hard to find. This donkey is truly a real beauty. Aside from the color of their coats, which are called cremello or cream because they're not pure white, these donkeys are also known for their blue eyes and friendly personalities. Rich estate owners in the Austro-Hungarian Empire bred this special donkey during the Baroque period to look like the popular white horses of the time. They have a weaker body than pigmented donkeys and are more likely to get sick. The number of babies they have is also low. These things make it hard to breed, so this donkey is really rare and special. If you find one, be sure to take a picture. Number 3. Royal Palm Turkey The Royal Palm is a small variety of turkey that's considered very beautiful by people who decide what a beautiful turkey looks like, I guess. In 1971, the American Poultry Association gave the Royal Palm its name. The feathers of a Royal Palm Turkey are white, but the edges are a sharply contrasting metallic black. <laughs> They have red to bluish white heads, a light horn shaped beak, light brown eyes, a red to bluish white throat and wattles, and deep pink legs and toes. Basically, they're colorful. The Royal Palm isn't good for business as other varieties of turkeys are, but it's still useful on small farms, making meat at home or in places where its ability to keep insects away is helpful. Number 2. Kolmor Goskoyi Geese the Kolmogory geese is a breed of goose that comes from Russia. It's hardy and very productive. When raised on small and large farms in Russia, it's one of the most profitable animals to raise. Kolmogory geese have some of the greasiest and heaviest meat of any goose breed. They can handle tough weather conditions and have a calm personality. When you raise a few of them, they'll always look out for the rest of them. Today, there aren't many left in Russia or other places where they're kept. The good news is that they're very good at adapting to new environments, which makes them easy to breed and raise. But these geese are also great at making meat because they're so big. A gander can weigh up to 12 kilograms on average, while a goose can weigh up to eight. They're fully grown at three years old, and if they're well taken care of, they can live for close to 17 years. That's, of course, if you don't murder it and eat it. Number one. White Park Cattle The White Park is an old breed of cattle with horns that are very rare nowadays and mostly live in the UK. White Park cattle aren't very common in the US where they're often called the ancient White Park. Several blood typing and DNA studies have shown that the White Park cattle are genetically unique. Other breeds of cattle like the Irish Moiled, the Blanco Orejinegro, the Berenda, the Naguni, and the Texas Longhorn also have coats with color points, meaning that these are some of its nearest relations. The White Park is genetically very different from all other British breeds. The goal of the current breeding program in the UK is to improve the breed's good qualities while keeping its genetic diversity. This is because heterogeneity is low because of inbreeding for most of the 20th century. So the future will hopefully be bright for this very ancient breed of cattle. What other animals could you imagine one day end up being farm animals? Could you imagine a farm with bears or tigers or lions on it? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.